For the function f whose graph is given, graph the antiderivative that satisfies the initial condition f of 0 equals 0. Note, to receive full credit, the antiderivative you sketch must not only have the correct shape, it must also take on the correct values, use the scale. So interpreting this into English, this picture of this graph is a derivative, who we're going to call f. The graph that they want drawn is capital F. So if I took the derivative of this guy, it would look like this. That's how that's working. Now they also give us a little bit of information. My capital F of 0 is 0. So it's going to go through this point. Start there. That's always the best place to start. Now some of this is going to be done differently than other things, so please pay close attention. Now um, let's start with the straightforward things here. These numbers are very tiny, so hopefully I can either tell you what they are or you can see them, but this here is a 1 and this is a minus 1 down here. So this means that the derivative of the function that I'm going to draw has a constant rate of change of negative 1 from minus whatever up until 0. So the function whose derivative is constant will always be a linear function. In this case, this is going to be a linear function of slope of negative 1. So let's kind of go backwards from here. I need to draw a negative, a slope of, sorry, I need to draw a linear function that has slope of negative one this direction. So that means from here, I'm gonna go over negative one and up negative one. Pay close attention to the scale. This is one half and that's one. And then again, I'm gonna go over one and up one, which is gonna give me my slope of negative one on this side. So there's part of my graph completed. Now the other side is going to be a little more challenging. Now notice it said that it must take on correct values. Well these values were easy to find where minus 1 and 1 and minus 2 and 2 nice and straightforward because it's a linear function. But this is going to be different. What shape of a graph has a derivative that's linear? Well by golly it's going to be quadratic. And not only am I going to come down here and draw a nice quadratic, I need to know exactly the points where I'm going to draw that quadratic function through. And what we're going to do in order to do that properly is use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what does that mean? That means, let's say I take my little function, my little f of x dx, and I integrate it over the integral from, over the interval of 0 to 1. Now according to the fundamental theorem, that's going to be capital F of 1 minus capital F of 0. Now of these three things I've written down, I know two. I know F of 0 is 0, and I know this is the area between my function and the horizontal axis over the interval from 0 to 1. That's this space right here. Now if the shape of it is a triangle, so we know how to calculate the area of a triangle. 1 half base times the height. My base is 1, my height is negative 1. So the area of my first triangle is 1 half base times height. And you're saying to yourself, how can area be negative? Well, it's not about the fact that the space is negative, it means where it is. So when you, in calculus, when you're calculating area with an integral and you get a negative area, that just means that, that most of the space of that distance between or the space between the function and the horizontal axis lies below the x-axis. Regardless of that, that means this integral here is going to be minus one-half f of one, and I can solve for f of one really easy now. So f of one is minus one-half, so I come down here, and when I'm at one, minus one-half. So I have a value that is appropriate. We're going to do that also for f of 2. So capital F of 2. 0 to 2, f of x dx equals f of 2 minus f of 0. Now a lot of students are saying, why don't you just do f of 1 instead of 0? Well, it's because I know f of 0 for sure. And if as long as I, um, I just want to make sure I'm not making a mistake. You always use the information you're given to find new information, regardless of if you found other information or not. So f of 2 is my unknown. I just need the area from 0 to 2. 
between my function and my horizontal axis. So I have this triangle over here. Now the area of this triangle and the area of this triangle is exactly the same, but this one lies below and this one lies above. So the sum of those areas is going to be zero. This is minus one half, this is positive one half. Let's just write that in here, minus one half, positive one half. So the sum of those is going to be zero. So f of two coming down here is zero. Lastly, let's do f of three. I'm going to integrate from zero to three, f of x dx. That's equal to f of three minus f of zero. f of three is the unknown, f of zero is zero, that's a negative sign. So let's calculate the area. Now here, under f of three, we get this trapezoid, but I can also divide it up into a triangle and a rectangle. I know the area between the curve and the horizontal axis from zero to two is zero, but I have to add to it all this area here. Now this triangle here is one half base times height. My base is one and my height is also one. So that has area one half. Now this is just a rectangle whose area is width times height. So my width is one, my height is also one. Remember what the scale says here, that's a one. So that space there is one. So the total sum of all of these areas here is going to be zero because those sum of those two is zero plus one half plus one. So you'd say that f of three then is three halves or one plus a half. So I come down here at three, I'm going to be at one and a half right there. Now I want to connect them. I'm going to try as best as I can to connect them in a smooth parabolic curve. And I'm going through the proper values based on the derivative that I was given.